Welcome to White's video learning series, The Goldmaster. Congratulations on your purchase of The Goldmaster. It promises to revolutionize metal detecting by making it easy for the novice and experienced treasure hunter alike. Its technology is so advanced, it makes discovery simple. This video presentation will allow you to get out and start hunting immediately and will also serve as a valuable reference as you refine your skills and gain experience with your detector. As you will discover, the Goldmaster is a powerful and versatile machine. Some of its features have never been incorporated into a metal detector before, so it's up to treasure hunters like yourself to find out what its capabilities are. During this presentation, you'll learn about the basics of operating the Goldmaster. We'll hear about the engineering behind this amazing device, and we'll show you some techniques that will help you in the field. Later on, we'll take you through every function of the Goldmaster so that you'll easily be able to maximize its features for your area and the type of hunting you'd want to do. To learn more about White's Electronics family of detectors and to locate a dealer near you, you can scan right on over to www.whiteselectronics.com. Let's get going. To begin, White's Customer Service Manager Steve Howard will take us through the steps of assembling your Goldmaster. White shipping carton is designed to be reusable. There's a handle inside the parts kit that inserts into the top of the shipping carton to double as a carrying case. Begin assembly by removing all of the parts from the shipping carton. There are the lower fiber rod and the upper S rod. the instruction manual, the parts kit, and battery, the control box, the loop is contained in a separate chamber. Begin assembling by removing the parts from the parts kit. The two washers go on the lower rod clevis, one washer on each side. It helps to lubricate or wet these washers so that they'll slide into place a little easier. Slide into the loop ears so that the opening lines up. Use only the non-metallic fiber nut and bolt to secure. Finger tight. The GMT has a center rod section. Compress the buttons on the fiber rod and insert into the center rod so that the spring clips line up and lock into one of the adjustment holes. Turn the cam lock to secure. Unravel the loop cable. Wind the loop cable around the rod, first revolution over the top, leaving a little slack so that the loop can pivot. Compress the spring clips in the center rod section. Line it up so that they lock into the holes in the control box rod. Turn the cam lock to secure. Plug the loop into the control box. It'll only fit one way. Turn the lock ring to secure. The cable retainers are designed to contain the loop cable, one near the S rod and one near the loop. Again, leave some slack near the loop so that the loop can pivot. Elbow cup foam pads are provided Peel the sticky back paper from the elbow cup. Align carefully in the elbow cup and press firmly into place. Open the battery compartment by pulling at the front of the battery latches and releasing the catch at the back. Open the battery compartment door. 
The battery fits into the compartment, decal facing down, steel contacts towards the inside. Many prospectors use headphones exclusively to prevent moisture and dust in the speaker, a decal is provided, which may be installed above the speaker for use exclusively with headphones. The elbow cup adjusts, has three available positions. As well, there are adjustments in the center rod to adjust the length of the loop. You are now ready to detect. If you had any difficulty or questions about assembling your unit, you can review the manual included with the GMT or rewind this tape and watch Steve again. Now when it comes to finding gold treasure, Jimmy Sierra Normandy has the Midas touch. But I think what interests me a lot about this hobby is, um, is that the stories that go with it. Um, whenever I have found something that I've put aside uh, and I look at it, something goes and an experience comes back. This was a shock. I kept looking at it. I couldn't get my eyes off. I stuck it in my pouch, kept looking at it, put it in my pouch. I, I don't believe this. You know, it's covered with mud, but uh, I knew I was in a good spot. And about 15 feet away, I got another signal, and uh, when we could hear cans and everything else, and I dug down about this far under rocks and was going to give up about two or three times, but I remember, you know, I've got to keep going, and it was really making a noise, just like a tin can. I went down 30 inches, it's about that far. And here's this boulder, it's about this big, I could hardly pull it out from underneath the rocks, and I ripped, pulled it over, there was a hunk of gold sticking out this big. Just a great big piece of gold <laughs> went right through the rock and spread out. And uh, it had uh, over 24 ounces of gold in it. Now you see what we mean when we say Jimmy has made a discovery or two. Maybe you're not going to go out right after watching this tape and promptly discover a giant gold-filled boulder like Jimmy did. But who knows? There's a world of exciting treasures just below the ground. To find them, you have to go look for them. And now you have the most powerful tool to help. Here's Jimmy to get us started with the Gold Master. Uh, this is the fifth Gold Master that I made a video for, and I can honestly say it's the simplest detector I've ever uh, had to demonstrate and to talk about. I'm just totally delighted because it's going to be the easiest job I've ever had. We'll start by uh, talking a little bit about, just briefly, where to put the controls. And there are, uh, by the way, three knobs, three toggle switches, and three touchpads. And that's it. And of course, the, the display, which uh, records some of the uh, information. But though it's only six, three, six, nine controls. The first control is the variable SAT control, um, as we found on the last uh, three Gold Masters. And it has a preset writ right on the um, uh, dial, below the dial, somewhere between three and four times. Um, we set these arbitrary numbers here just uh, to have a place to relate to. So we have a preset on the SAT, which gives you the, what I call normal speed of self-adjusting threshold. The threshold uh, is controlled by the knob uh, forward of that. It has no uh, marks on it, and it's the only one that you'll really have to set on your own. You will turn that clockwise to get an audio threshold uh, that's comfortable to your ear. For example, if you're wearing headphones, you're going to make a much lower threshold. If you're not using headphones, uh, then the threshold will be a little louder so that you can actually hear the faint hum that's typical of uh, the uh, uh, GEB detectors uh, of which uh, the Gold Master is, is. The third control is the gain. Um, we changed the name to gain from sensitivity because it more describes what's going on. We have a preset position. It also uh, here of between seven and eight. And again, the little triangle, which is, uh, I should say, in the uh, initial setting. Preset is something we used, um, which we don't use anymore. Initial setting, it's a place to set it before you go out and, and uh, detect. And we've set that between seven and eight. Uh, you turn it clockwise uh, uh, to go from uh, 0 through 10, and the power is turned on at that time. Those are the three knobs. Uh, let's start with the three toggle switches. The net first toggle switch is merely tells you whether you're going to operate in the fast auto tracking position, where the detector does all the ground balancing for you. You don't do anything but just leave it there. That I have put as the initial setting. It has the diamond there. There is a second setting that you can use 